I hate this part. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 annoying sections in video games. What do you want? For this list, we're looking at sections in video games that drove us nuts, whether it was due to the level design or game mechanics. <laughs> we aren't focusing on specific sections or levels in a single game, instead doing an overall sweep of those sections that annoy us every time. Three, two, one, fire! Number 10, platforming sections in non-platforming games. At one time, platforming games were the most popular genre, so it's understandable that key elements of that genre would weave their way into other games. There are, however, some games that really don't need platforming sections, and we're mainly talking about first-person shooters. We can understand the need to hop over a ledge or something, but when we are jumping onto small platforms and can barely see our feet, things get a bit frustrating. This is probably made worse by the fact that most real 3D platformers allow you to correct your trajectory mid-jump, whereas shooters and RPGs rarely incorporate this feature. Number 9. Filler Fetch Quests I want you to carry out this task. What?! You see them in almost every RPG. An NPC will stand around waiting for you, the hero, to show up so they can give you a difficult task of retrieving their lost necklace, their lost pet, or the ever-so-popular collection of rare herbs. You find some iron and a good logging site. Maybe Harriet can get our troops better weapons. These types of quests are pretty much there to stretch out the game. Games like Skyrim or Dragon Age boast tons of side quests, but most of them equate to, hey, I know you're supposed to save the world today, but could you run a quick errand for me? Because I'm lazy. Also, anyone who's played Monster Hunter will know what I mean when I say egg quests. <sighs> Number eight, sewer levels. Welcome to the sewers, punk. The guy you're replacing, he had that same tough guy smirk on his face that you do. Sewers are dark, dank, smelly places. So why would we want to experience this in any form? These types of levels have you traversing maze-like environments, often pushing switches to open up new sections while fighting off the standard bats, rats, and other rodents. <laughs> Sewer levels are also a chance for game designers to abuse their copy-paste button, since most of these levels tend to look really samey. As a result, these sections often mirror their real-life counterparts and end up being pretty shitty. Number 7. Vehicle Sections You need to get to your next destination fast, or the bad guys are getting away. So how would you go about getting there or catching up? How about we go for a nice drive? She's not getting away again. There's nothing wrong with driving, unless the drive is boring and you don't know what you're doing. We were all too happy killing bad guys the old-fashioned way, but now we have to get used to a new set of controls and parade down what appears to be a linear corridor made to look like a regular street. Plus, now that you've learned to drive in that fancy new tank or whatever, say goodbye because you'll never see it again. Number 6. Stealth Sections Sneaking around is fun if you're Solid Snake, Sam Fisher, or a ninja, but when we have an arsenal of devastating weapons in our hands, stealth is the last thing on our mind. <laughs> Stealth-based missions can be fun, if it's offered as one way of beating a level, not the only way. Perhaps it is time to try out our new Hollow Pirate Disguise. But most of the time, in these types of missions, if you're spotted, you pretty much have to start over. I am just <laughs> If you've spent the whole game charging headlong into every room guns blazing, this sort of thing ends up being less of a break from the action and more of a genuine deal breaker. Uh. Number 5. Life Force Doors Earning its name from Jet Force Gemini, Life Force Doors are obstacles that block your path until you kill all the enemies in the area. Waves of enemies will attack you all at once, usually in a small enclosed area, making it sometimes difficult to pull off the attacks. What are they? What is their purpose? What makes these sections all the more annoying is when you have to defeat the enemies using a certain power or attack to be able for it to count. We want to kill the bad guys because we want to, not because we have to. Also, where's the logic in this from the bad guy's perspective? Let's make sure he can kill everyone I throw at him before opening the next door so he can get to me? Seems legit. Do we need to go over my lesson again? Number 8. Time Limit Sections We understand that sometimes you need to make decisions fast in video games, but that still doesn't mean we like to be put on the spot. 
Making us hurry only makes us nervous and prone to rage quit when we don't finish a section in a certain amount of time. Usually this involves a game over and we have to do the whole thing over again. Then there are some games that have the whole premise based around a time limit. Although some of these games do this right, like Majora's Mask, others do not. Yes, we're talking about you, Lightning. Are you alright? I'm fine, just reminiscing. Number 3. Escort Missions <laughs> Trying to keep yourself alive in a game is one thing, but when you add an idiot into the mix who can't fight for themselves, it's a whole new ball game. <laughs> Pointing out a certain blonde girl and a bevy of infected villagers as our main offender, these missions often have you escorting a character through innumerable hazards without getting them killed. Uh, Leon, what's gonna happen to us? The only problem is, their AI is usually moronic, and we constantly have to save them from themselves, essentially. Even if they can technically fight for themselves, they usually prove to be ineffectual in combat. Number 2. Water Levels to most children of the 80s and 90s, these levels were the worst. Water levels are extremely annoying, not because of their inherent difficulty, but because of the physics of the water itself. You did it! Now we can swim in peace! You will normally find yourself swimming around, which sorta of sounds fun, but combine that with a slow pace, disorienting camera, and in some cases an air meter, and you have a recipe for disaster. Pop quiz, how do you ruin something as timeless as the Ninja Turtles? Water levels, dude water levels. Before we reluctantly trek through our top pick, let's take a look at some honorable mentions. Or in this case, dishonorable mentions. Number 1. Quick Time Events This seemed like such a good idea the first time we saw it. Quick time events are there to keep you on your feet by having you press the right button or sequence of buttons to interact with the game, if done right. Don't be shy, let the music inside it. Dance, dance, dance. Unfortunately, they aren't always used correctly or are placed in areas where they shouldn't be. For example, you could be watching and enjoying a cutscene and out of nowhere you get hit with a quick time event that you can't react fast enough to and then you're dead. These did work way back in the 80s for Dragon's Lair, but nowadays they're essentially used to make you feel like you're playing a cutscene, but you're not. It's like watching a movie where you have to keep unpausing it every two seconds or it'll restart on you. Do you agree with our list? That was fantastic! What video game sections annoy you the most? Nothing comes to mind, love. Sorry. For more not-so-annoying top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.